Hey there, everybody. How's it going? Uh, nice to see you. Noah, everyone who reads it must converse. It's on. Friday Night Live, baby. Mark Richardson, Richardson Reads in the house. What a strong reader. I love your channel, Mark. Recognitions Book Club in the house. Yeah, buddy. Really enjoy uh, your uh, your Instagram content, that's for sure. Bookish Bryant, always in the house, for sure. Thank you for always uh, supporting me, and thank you for tagging me in that uh, that A to, A to J, right? But uh, when I get around to it, I'm probably just going to knock out the whole alphabet, right? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Hey, Scott. Scott Danielson's here. Nice to see you, brother. So uh, there is a lot going on tonight. I have a really, really fun uh, hour for us, that's for sure. So I want to make sure that everybody is down. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so glad that you loved Hyperion, Mark, because I loved Hyperion. And uh, if you can, go for, go for, go for the whole series, brother. It is a mind blow. It's so good. The whole series is so good. And uh, you will not be disappointed. To the Lit House, Yasmin, thank you. Nice to see you. And uh, Yasmin and I are having an awesome time reading Borges. It's just, is it, is it not just the mind-blowing, most mind-blowing thing that you've read? <laughs> it's so good to see that, uh, to see what Borges can do in like four pages, you know, four pages, man. I mean, six pages, eight pages, nine pages max. That's like his max. And it's just, and it's just ridiculous. Very cool. Very cool. Book two, I would say uh, Fall of Hyperion is even better than Hyperion. I, I enjoyed the second book bet more. Um, I know that Scott probably doesn't share that affinity. Uh, the first book is almost a perfect book. I mean, it's amazing. But the second book is so super interesting and action and everything. Like, it's just, it's just, it's so good. And then after that, um, Endymion and Rise of Endymion, very literary. Carrie, thank you for coming by. Uh, the last two are, are different, but spectacular, completely spectacular. Very literary. Carrie, I really, really enjoyed your passion according to GH take earlier today. It was really, really cool to see and, uh, and to hear that discussion that you uh, did you see my video i did a, a video on passion according to gh earlier uh in 2020 because um we'll see the first book is a masterpiece the second book is good for sure <laughs> yeah i figured scott had more of an affinity for the uh for the um for the first book but the second book just, I mean, I was just mm, in the pocket, loving it. So we got a whole lot to get to tonight, guys. So I really want to get started, even though we have only a few. Tom L.A. Books, thanks for coming by. Nice to see you. Um, I want to get through this awesome, massive haul that I got going on. And then um, I want to address the font latest video am i right i told you guys i told you that the font was going to be one of those um those channels that just that just uh uh moves booktube you know our little corner of booktube for sure she's so fun she's so funny she's very uh articulate <coughs> Barb and Isabella do a great job together of putting together something that they want to talk about. And so, very cool. More to come. I can't wait. I love Clar Clarice Lispector. So, um, 
I knew that the, that Barb and uh, Isabella were going to just really were going to really just change the face of stuff. Christy Louise Dostoevsky in space. Christy Lewis, is that right? Because I say Louise all the time, but I think that Lewis is the way that um, is more proper to say if I got it like that. Um, but I'm I'm just an idiot, so I'm gonna probably keep on mispronouncing it. <laughs> Very cool, yeah. Uh, Tom L.A. Books exploration of um, Dante's Inferno is insane. I want to show this week all these books came from the same book house. They came from the same used bookstore that is actually right around the corner from where I live. Okay? Um, so never discredit the power of a crappy local bookstore. Okay? Because I went in here and I found some amazing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I figured, I figured. L Christy Lewis Dostoevsky in space. <laughs> Borges on writing. This is Borges exploring um, Black, Black Spine Penguin uh, classic. This is Borges exploring writing of, of all kinds. James Joyce Ulysses, he's got a four page kind of critique on uh, reading goal. Uh, Walt Whitman's Leaves, Leaves of Grass, Homer. Um, <laughs> uh, he's exploring uh, T.S. Eliot, uh, Virginia Woolf, Faulkner's Absalom, Absalom, Henry James, H.G. Wells, Julio Cotazar, Stories, Wilkie Collins, uh, Detective Stories, um, just so much, and then his own ideas of what writing is, is in here as well. Um, it's amazing. I've already read a little bit of it, but I'm not getting into too much because we're, we're working through Borges' work. Yasmin and I are really doing an, an amazing job at getting through Borges. You see, I'm halfway through, and the latter half is all a lot smaller than what we've read, but I'm halfway through, and... Um, Oh my God, I love, I love Borges. I am in love with Borges. Very cool. <laughs> I am about to blow your mind with this, with this used bookstore find. This is something that I came across. I'll show it first because I got it right on top. I was uh, just Lee, Lee Kemper. First time I've seen you here. I appreciate you coming by. Nice to see you. And um, just so you guys know, if nobody, if anybody's here that's not subscribed to me, I don't know why you would be if you're not subscribed to me. But if you are, please subscribe. I'm only two away from hitting 800, which is insane. But um, I was hoping that I would hit 800 before I started the live tonight. But um, <laughs> I'm at 798, so <laughs> whatever. But it will be it will be cool. It would be cool to be at 800 after the live stream is over or something like that. But I was scanning the 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 just the general fiction paperbacks. That's all they were were the small mass market paperbacks, okay? And there was just a room full of them. Every wall around a room and they're laid sideways on the shelf. Boom, 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 right? And so I was like, okay, I got to look through all these. So I start looking through all these, and I come across. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe it, but I, I came across. Hey, Kelly, Kelly Hooked on Books, thank you for coming by. I came across just on a whim. Joseph McElroy's A Smuggler's Bible in mass market paperback. This is the Bard edition. Bard is published by Avon Books. Can you see? Can you see how I'm getting the light on it just to show you that there's not 
a crease. This thing has never been read. Never been read. A Smuggler's Bible by Joseph McElroy. 1977 is when this uh, book was published. And it was first copyrighted in 1966 is when Joseph McElroy published it. And this book is extremely rare. Extremely rare. Most that... um have seen this said that they never, they didn't even know that this edition existed because you just don't see it like for real. Okay. This is McElroy's first novel. Um, it's very, uh, postmodern dense. Uh, McElroy is a, is what is known as a tough read, but I have, um, I've gotten plus um, on a digital format. That's the only way I could get it. And then I got women and men. And you can see there's a little crease down here on the bottom, on the back, uh, right there. You see it? And that's the only blemish to this copy. Other than that, it is just age because this was published before I was even born. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what can I do? Right? So uh, I got it for $3. Three bucks. I bought a, a, a stack of books and I paid $30 for the stack and this was in it. I paid $3 for this thing. A smuggler's Bible is often empty. That's right. <laughs> exactly right I'm going to leave it right here just just like that so everybody can kind of see it in the shot because um, it's just that kind of thing alright let me go through uh, my haul I want to knock this out I'm already 12 minutes into it so I'm trying to like get it get it get it through Um, alright I got the science fiction hall of, hall of fame volume 2a this is coming highly regarded. I want the volume 2B as well, but the uh, 2A comes highly regarded. Robert Heinlein, Paul Anderson, Theodore Sturgeon, H.G. Wells. And the reason I really picked this up, I got it for like three bucks as well. The reason I grabbed this is because in this is Baby is Three by Theodore Sturgeon, which is the second uh, chapter, the second part of that Theodore Sturgeon that I just did a video on called More Than Human. It was originally a novella. It was Baby is Three. And in this uh, edition, we have that novella. And then he wrote a before and an afterward and just tacked them on around uh, Baby is Three and, and created the novel More Than Human. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. Here, I'll put... I'll put the smuggler's Bible up, up on top and, uh, and then, and then lay my, lay my others alongside here. All right. I got a, uh, a reading copy, a, uh, paperback of Umberto Echo's, uh, Focal's Pendulum, because I'm going to be reading this in, um, 2021. It's part of my big books, TBR. You see this unread copy. It's ridiculous. So I saw it. I figured I wouldn't read my hardcover uh, first edition, first American edition of Focal's Pendulum because it's so oppressive to like hold it, right? Such a big book. So this one is totally, you know, just doable. I'll just, I'll just read it. So I grabbed it. Wasn't, wasn't but a couple of, couple of bucks. Very cool. Nice, Mark. Thank you, brother. I got a couple of uh, a couple more uh, Gunther Gross because I really uh, enjoyed Call of the Toad, and I'm probably going to do a video on that at some point. Um, just just when I feel like it. Um, it wasn't as strong as I um, kind of hoped it would be, 
with all the kind of hype of Gunter Gross being such an awesome satirist and and writer. But, you know, it was good. I really enjoyed it. I don't want to disparage it in any kind of way. That is my copy. I put it on on eBay. <laughs> because I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read this copy. I'm not going to read that. Because it's not going to survive a reading. Uh, that mass market paperback will be totally destroyed after one reading. You know, the cover might fall off. Uh, you might have the spine completely split in some point if you read that. So it's going to go to a collector. It's not going to go to for a reader. Okay. I have a copy of a smuggler's Bible. I have a copy of that book coming to me right now uh, from a friend that um, is sending it to me. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll share that on down the road uh, when I do an unboxing because we did a book exchange where we uh, gave, gave a box full of books to each other. But that was one that my buddy put in the box. So I'm going to sell that one and just flip that money to more books that I want, right? Because I'm not, I'm not collecting Joseph McElroy. If nobody buys it, then I'll keep it. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't care. You know what I mean? But, it, but people love Joseph McElroy. And um, I want, I do want it to go uh, towards to to somebody who you know who really uh, will cherish it and love it and keep it nice. It's not for reading. So I got uh, Gunther Grass uh, Cat and Mouse, and I got Gunther Grass uh, The Meeting at Telgiti, and this seems like just right where I want to be right here. This is. What happens when the world's keenest minds assemble to ponder the paradoxes of the universe? Well, first they partake of some wine, women and song. And once sufficiently stuffed, they squabble over the advantages of I before E poets. After all, may never ensue immortality, but they will at least satisfy certain longings of the flesh. So it is, um, seems, seems very cool. Eloquent, a key component in Gross's idiosyncratic and magnificent body of work. That's how this is described. It is a scene of 17th century as Monty Python may play it. <laughs> Complex, clever, and clearly drawn. Very cool. And I can say that Gunter Gross is uh, clearly drawn is uh, a very a very good way to describe what Gunther Gross um, does because it is um, very beautiful writing and like the scenes are so tangible and I saw that with uh, the Call of the Toad but I want more so Cat and Mouse as well a new kind of genius is what this one says. <laughs> Cat and mouse, grotesque, body, sharply satirical, and yet surprisingly poetic, provides renewed evidence that Gross is astonishing. Uh, Gross's astonishing inventiveness has no equal in present day German literature. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to really enjoy them, I'm sure. Cat and mouse and the meeting at Kelgiti. I got a, a reading copy, a very cool uh, reading copy of Gurdjieff's Meetings with Remar Remarkable Men. I've read parts of this before. I have a, uh, a, a, a more of a, what is it, like a trade paperback. I don't have Tin Drum yet. I haven't seen it, but I'm going to keep, uh, keep my eyes on it. That's for sure. Um. But Gurdjieff is an amazing reader, so I, w I wanted to I grab this just because this is going to be more easy to read, never been read. And you see, six bucks, right? I paid twice for this what I paid for that McElroy. Holy crap, right? It's ridiculous. Completely ridiculous to find that. 
<laughs> Thank you, guys. Very cool. Yeah. Um, peeling the onion, I haven't heard of as well. I don't know. But I did get, I'll go ahead and show this one first. I got uh, the Gunther Gross Reader. So this has excerpts from The Tendrum, uh, My Century, Dog Years, My Century, and uh, a look back at The Tendrum, the author's reflections on it after years of publication. A lot from My Century. I don't know what that is. Diary of a Snail, The Flounder. I have that one on the way. The Rat, Call of the Toad, a little bit of that. And then a lot of just, just, just writings that, that aren't from his uh, books, but um, just, just maybe small little essays or just writings uh, as far as like um, poetry. There's some of this kind of stuff. You know, memoir. Yeah. <laughs> no, no cowboys over in Poland. That's for sure. Gunther Gross, uh, somebody that I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm getting into. It's uh, it's 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 good stuff. Very uh, very good, very good writing is what it is. It's, like it, like I said, it's very clear. All right, so I got a, another Penguin Classics Black Spine. This is the early English poems. I grabbed this for really, really cheap. And I mean, I love Beowulf, so um, I went, I went ahead and and got this, even though Beowulf is um present in this as well. And uh, we got. The Phoenix, The Dream of the Rude, uh, Early Riddles of, in the English Language, and um, excerpts from Beowulf, of course. The Ruin, Cadmon's Hymn, and Bede's Death Song. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I think I think I think all of Gunther, Gunther Grass is a humorous take. He's a satirist. All of his stuff is very uh, strong in satire. So, uh, very cool. Nice, Scott. I I love Tolstoy. Hey, Leo. Nice to see you, Leo. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to fall behind too much. Nice. I don't want to fall behind too much on the, uh, on the, on the comments, but I do want to just kind of get through this haul. So I picked up another book by Scott Bradfield. I don't know how much uh, you guys know about Scott Bradfield. He has a YouTube channel. It's just his name, Scott Bradfield. And, um, I love his channel and, and he used to do radio. He used to do radio show and, <laughs> and um, now he does YouTube. He has a couple thousand subscribers. He's a cool guy. And um, I watch all of his videos. It's reading good books in the bathtub. <laughs> that's what, that's what his, uh, his kind of um, show is called. But he is, uh, but his channel is called just Scott Bradfield. I was able to pick up something months ago by Scott Bradfield called The History of Luminous Motion. This is a very cool looking book. It's a great binding. Um, this is by Knopf, the edition. You see the, uh, the binding here, right? And then take the dust cover off and it's, just like this just to give you an idea
very cool. And then in that same bookstore that I bought all this stuff, it came from the same bookstore, just one right uh, around the corner from me. I grabbed What's Wrong with America by Scott Bradfield. And look how slim this is. You're going to be able to say what's wrong with America in, in uh, 196 pages. I don't think so. Okay. There's a lot more wrong with America than, <laughs> than what you can fit in 196 pages. There's a, there's a young Scott Bradfield right there. He, he looks pretty much the same on his YouTube channel. But if you don't know, uh, check him out. I, I really enjoy him. And, uh, and, and I think you might too. So I'm looking to get into some of his stuff. I've never read either one of those. And, um, you know, it might be cool. Yeah. Books, reading good books in the bathtub. <laughs> it's a, it's great. <laughs> Very cool. He does, uh, Scott Bradfield has a bunch of videos on JR. I think he did like four videos, um, series on JR. Hey, Philip. Phil, Phil's in the house. Thanks to see you, brother. Nice to see you. And um, I do have quite a bit going on over here. You might be interested in just to see my Smuggler's Bible right there by McElroy. This little mass market paperback. It's ridiculous to have found that. It's ridiculous, I tell you. Yeah, look how slim it is. What's wrong with America? Less than 200 pages? I think not. Jesus. Like whatever, patriotic. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not patriotic. Let me tell you, I would never, ever serve in the military. I would. I would serve only uh, being made to. That's for sure. I haven't. I haven't seen him do anything on pinch on. Uh, maybe I did see him do something on Vineland. Very cool. All right. So I got the Norton Critical Edition of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. I love this. God, I love The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. It's been a long time since I've read it. So I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to go through some of the literary criticism on this. I, I, I found this in that same bookstore. I was like, yes. I love Norton Critical Editions. And so, yeah, thank you, Christy. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. I'm so close to, <laughs> to 800. I was like, ah. So, um, yeah, I can't wait. Nice. Very cool, Ryan. Um, Ryan was telling me, Ryan is Republic of Bad Taste. For those who don't know, um, and Ryan was telling me uh, an awesome story about how you came upon uh, William T. Volman's Rising Up and Rising Down in a used bookstore, the hardcover complete set. Oh, man. Just I love it. I love that. So got, grab this one because uh, why not? OK, uh, T.S. Eliot is just a staple. Thanks. Thanks, Becky. One more sub. Thanks, Becky. I, uh, my youngest daughter is named Zelda. So I love Zelda. I love Zelda the game. I love Zelda the daughter. And um, I rock Zelda anytime I can. I love Zelda, that's for sure. And um, Zelda plays uh, Breath of the Wild and is actually a really, a really, really uh, strong player. I have the ice shirt. I have never read it, but um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up, right? Thanks, Christy. I appreciate that. <laughs> I never, I never, I never remember. <laughs> I never remember to tell people, hey, uh, you know, 
sub to me if you're not subbed or give a thumbs up to the video, you know, but uh, that, that kind of stuff really does help. That's what it's, that's what it's all about. Yes, Ryan, the full edition of rising up, rising down hardcover for 250 bucks. That's what it was. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Uh huh. Okay. So I got a uh, guy, uh, Guy de Maupassant, The Necklace and Other Stories. Uh, Guy de Maupassant is an insanely strong short story writer. So I grabbed uh, the Dover Thrift Edition. It'll go up on my shelf with my other Dover Thrift Editions. And I'll get to it at my leisure. That's for sure. Um, the Necklace, A Piece of String, Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle Fifi. A Way to Wealth, My Uncle Jules, and La Horla, and um, Guy de Maupassant, rocking. Um, I haven't read a lot, but I'm hoping to uh, get to it, that's for sure. Very cool. Arizona is in the house. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Breath of the Wild is perfection. I love, I love Breath of the Wild. It's such an amazing, beautiful game. Hey, Jack. Thank you for coming by, brother. Nice to see you always, bro. Um, I hope everything's going good in your neck of the woods. And um, to you and yours, y'all are, y'all are um, warriors. Y'all are, y'all are some warriors, man. So I got uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. Uh, no Exit and three other plays. Now, I came in contact with No Exit through a short story collection by David Vardaman called um, An Angel of Sodom, which is awesome. And there's a there's a video on my on my uh, reviews, my take on on An Angel of Sodom. But in in that one of the uh, characters is putting on a play of No Exit. So I figured I'd check it out, right? So I grabbed that one. Very, very cheap and cool. And then I won a little uh, giveaway on um, <laughs> on on Instagram, a little giveaway that somebody was doing. And then they sent me, they were giving away three books and we had our choice. So my choice was a Nabokov that I've never read, The Real Life of Sebastian Knight by uh, Vladimir Nabokov. I love I, I really enjoy Nabokov. Um some of his stuff is not exactly to my taste, that's for sure. But Pale Fire and Lolita I love. And um I've never read this one, so I'll give it a try. The real life of Sebastian Knight. Unread and this is of uh, the vintage paperback edition. So got that one sent for free. Thank you very much for that one it's very cool <laughs> yeah i need to finish some beckett right um i haven't started beckett yet and when i start beckett i'm not going to really dig into his plays first i'm going to go for uh malloy and um the unnameable and those that the beckett trilogy there that's going to be my first uh, Beckett explorations. So um, I am trying to get these uh, good full-size editions with the illustrations of the Dark Tower series. So I got the first uh, one, the Gunslinger, because I just had a mass market paperback of it. And this one here is just where I want to be because it has... Uh, the illustrations with it. And I love the Dark Tower series. I mean, it, it's it's awesome. It has everything, every kind of uh, literary device that you can think of is present in the Dark Tower series. And all the editions, every, every single uh, one of the Dark Tower series, uh, there's seven books to it. They all have editions that have illustrations with it. And that's what I want. I want to get 
that. So I got, I found this, the first uh, gunslinger with, with the illustrations. So I grabbed it. I love this last picture. Very cool, huh? So, um, you know, the gunslinger, the first book gets some flack and rightly so. It was one of the first things that he ever read. I mean, that he ever wrote. So um, I love Nabokov's. My favorite thing from Nabokov is actually speak memory. I love speak memory. I mean, what an amazing uh, autobiography. <laughs> I mean, you could never, you could never touch it, you know? So um, I love speak memory. And I, I'm sure that his his takes on literature and his takes on writing are wonderful. Uh, see you later, Recognitions Book Club. Thank you, brother. Nice to see you. And uh, catch you next time, that's for sure. And so uh, I love I love the Dark Tower. I mean, dude, it really is cool as hell. And the end is, I found the end super satisfying. Super satisfying. I love uh, Invitation to a Beheading. I, I did a uh, dig as well. For sure. <laughs> the last Dark Tower book is the first book I ever chunked across the room. You didn't like it. And see, that's the thing. Uh, the ending that... Uh, King gives to the Dark Tower series, yeah, it's very polarizing. But um, I like it. Let me tell you, I really did like it a lot. And so, uh, <laughs> hey, Summer. Nice to see you, for sure. Nice to see you. And um, thanks for coming by. Oh, my God. The Dark Tower is the best the best thing that I've read by Stephen King is that series, but I'm reading 11, 22, 63 in April with, with Scott Danielson. So, um, we're going, we're going into that. So I'm hope, I hope to, uh, have a new, have a new, uh, a new favorite because I hear too much really, really great stuff about, um, 11, 22, 63. I hear that it's just freaking awesome. Really. <laughs> Very cool. <clears throat> yeah, Salem's Lot is 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 a very uh, powerful king book. And Salem's Lot plays a very strong role in the Dark Tower series as well. It does. Yeah, I hear 112263 stands among his best. That's for sure. I can't wait to read it. I'm reading it in April. So um, I had mentioned my last live that I have the, uh, let me make it right. I have the uh, Norton History or Norton Anthology of World Literature, Volume A and Volume B, right? And then I had grabbed Volume C, but it wasn't the Anthology of World Literature. It was the Anthology of American literature volume C. So I screwed up, right? What's up, PG? I finna read that. Nice to see you, brother. Thanks for coming by. So um I had grabbed the American literature volume C, right? Well, now I grabbed the world literature volume C. I got that from this bookstore as well. And that will uh, finish up this wrap up. Uh, this is the uh, Norton Anthology of World Literature, Volume C, Second Edition. And that's what I have here is all uh, second editions. So I'm going for um, all the second editions. I want to I wanna get them in the same, you know, same format, same look, all that kind of thing. And um, I'm doing pretty good. I think. And they had some of the American literature at that, at that bookstore. I might, I might go back and grab that at some point, but also, um, 
<laughs> also, uh, see if I can find volume D of the world literature, right? All right, so we're 40 minutes through, and uh, I hope that uh, everybody's ready because the font did a video that is kind of like talking about what what reading as a booktuber and reading things that you um, feel like you should read instead of things that really resonate with you, things like that. And so I w I'm going to do a response to that. I hope that everybody that is in the chat has seen that video. If not, then I'm going to link it in the description uh, once I am done with this live. But I'm going to just address what she kind of brings up. So one of the things that uh, Barb and Isabella talk about in that is the, the tendency of reading as a booktuber to read books to impress versus uh, reading uh, what, you, what you just would normally read. A tendency to, or, or a desire, a kind of impulse is better, uh, better said. You have an impulse inside to read something that you think will impress your audience, okay? Now, um, that takes you knowing who your audience is, okay? I have 800 people that are subscribed to me. Sometimes certain people will chime in and, and comment on videos, and other times it'll be a whole different group of people who are subs to me that chime in on certain videos. I have no idea what people that follow me want. And I don't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, I don't read anything that I'm, that I'm reading for, for booktube in a way. I mean, I'm going to read anyways. I read all the time, right? And I've always read. So I'm going to read. So uh, I'm going to put, I'll link the, the channel is, is the font. That is the channel that is, uh, that I'm talking about. And um, her latest video. So we have an idea, or she brings up an idea of reading something to like impress the community that's watching you. But BookTube is so varied that I can't even wrap my head around what that might even be. Okay, like who watches my videos uh, that wants to see content of a certain type because there's so many different types of booktubers and so many different types of people who are following booktubers that, you know, what, what kind of stuff? I mean, there's a huge group that reads genre horror, genre fiction, um, thrillers, uh, YA, um, postmodern, history. Um, there's all these different kinds of niches and like what, yeah, the asterisk is part of the name, just like I wrote it. So what, what, you know, <laughs> it does impress me that you read that Jack. <laughs> I love it. I love you, Jack. Oh, very cool. So um, I think it's more like this kind of thing of recommended must read books like Dante's Inferno, for example, um, Charles Dickens, Great Expectations, A Tale of Two Cities, David Copperfield, those kinds of things, Pride and Prejudice, that'll come up later. These kind of things that are like essential must reads that are not part of like what you might read if you were going at ch choosing books. Now, 
I've always been one that wants to go at new stuff. I want to go at new stuff. That's for sure. New to me, not new stuff, newly published. I mean, new to me that I've never read before. I want to read new stuff. I want something. I want a new experience of language. That's what I want. So, um, I think, I think it's more of a thing of, well, do you stay in your comfort zone? That would be the kind of thing that is, is the thing explored is staying in your comfort zone and going only with what you are going to bring up as far as what you should read. Or do you go ahead and recommend or read things are like the recommended must read books like Pride and Prejudice, for example, or uh, Dante's Inferno, right? And I would say for sure you should read those books. Those books are uh, classics and, and super powerful over the stood the test of time for a reason, for a reason. They're awesome stuff. And, um, but she brings up the uh, esteem, uh, like of literary esteem, of literary clout of certain books. And I just don't see exactly why you're going to discredit a book that has literary clout necessarily because it's not something that you would get into because there's a reason why these books are so lauded, okay? And I mean, I've come in contact with plenty of books that I don't like necessarily. I thought were boring or I thought were lacking in certain kind of ways. But a book that was written in the 1800s is, is going to be kind of... Um, boring to somebody who reads postmodern complex encyclopedic fiction that kind of stuff thomas finchin kind of thing you know what i mean uh charles dickens is boring to me now i enjoy the read because i put myself back in that uh place <laughs> I put myself back in the time period that that was written and I try to see what the author was doing and all that kind of stuff. That's what I, uh, that's why, where I derive some enjoyment out of that reading. But David Copperfield was super boring to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 Mark. <laughs> um, David Copperfield was boring to me compared to Against the Day by Thomas Pynchon. You know what I mean? There's just, there's just so much more to it. And, and that's just it. So Barb also brings up the idea of reading for fun <clears throat> as opposed to be reading to be a well-rounded reader, to be a well-rounded uh person on booktube and i've 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 read a lot to be well-rounded you know what i mean i love to read all different kinds of stuff and it isn't in an effort to be well-rounded because literature comes from all different places and these kind of things bear on modern literature you know so that kind of thing is fun <laughs> you know what i mean uh I don't know why there's a kind of thing where if you read things that are out of your comfort zone that are new and to gain a new kind of um, a new kind of experience of a text, <laughs> uh, the 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 buddy read of David Copperfield was Lukash. Uh, at totally pretentious and um it was it was kind of a trudge to get through some of it 
And it's not that the prose was a trudge. The prose was very beautiful and it was cool. But it's like what happened in David Copperfield was something that happens on like 30 pages of a Thomas Pynchon novel, right? And you got another, you know, 700 pages to go <laughs> or something, right? So it's like that. But uh, the the idea of reading to be well-rounded and that that has kind of um, – takes away the enjoyment of of reading that kind of thing uh i don't i don't i don't get because i read i want to read all different i want to read something new for the fun of that you know what i mean that's what i'm what i'm looking for and this kind of thing uh gets up to the next point that barb comes to is that there's a quote unquote shaming thing that people do to themselves. And what I see is that is it is you're taking it personal. If somebody doesn't like uh, what you read. All right. If you're somebody who reads uh, like, like, like Becky is saying, you know, uh, romance, cowboy romances, you know what I mean? Cozy mysteries. And that's your thing. There's no shame in that. I mean, dude, it's reading. It's amazing. It's great. You're a badass for it. And we love you. This is the community. We're readers. And it doesn't matter what you read that, that, we, uh, that we embrace you as a reader, you know. But people will kind of um, shame themselves in that way. That's what Barb was getting at anyways. And I don't see it as shaming. I see it as like you're being too critical on yourself that maybe some of the people that you're watching like different stuff than you do. And you think that you should like that. Like, I don't really get it. I don't really get that at all. There's, there's different ways that somebody is going to uh, think that they should read something different. And I'm going to give a few examples. Say you read nothing but genre fiction, Stephen King, James Patterson, um, you know, the, the, this, that kind of uh, cookie cutter. Um, not, not that King is a cookie cutter, but an author that's like in the pocket. Um, you might kind of dig on yourself because that is the, uh, the kind of, <laughs> that is the kind of, um, you know, just for everybody. It's not, it's not, it's not exclusive and you're, you're not a, you know, into anything higher literary or something. Um, say you're somebody that reads all classics, right? You read only classics. Well, you're old fashioned and you like um, that, that kind of stuff, you know, you're just like a traditionalist and not into any of the, you know, uh, current, current literary movements you know what i mean if you like postmodernism maximalist fiction well you're pretentious you know that kind of stuff where you're pretentious because you like uh that kind of stuff right this kind of stuff is is all crap it's all crap it should not at all be dictating what you read or how you read or what you do as a booktuber, or anything like that. It's ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. The whole thing about that is ridiculous. So what this comes down to, I saw the fonts video, is she had said it at the very end. Right, right. Postmodernism is already like 50 years old i mean like come on it's like it's like come on i i mean it's all just literature just read whatever you want read whatever you want and nobody is sitting there judging you if they are block their fucking content block their comment off your channel right quit don't worry about what other people 
thing. So she brought up at the end there. Sorry for the F-bomb, by the way. <laughs> um, that it's staying true to your original intent as far as what you read when you're starting a booktube channel. Um, as opposed to uh, doing a le uh, an amount of people pleasing with the books and the content that you grab, that you uh, read for your channel, right? So um, if you are somebody who is getting away from something that you, you know, want to read and grabbing stuff that you don't necessarily want to read, but you're doing it for a people pleasing kind of aspect. Well, what are you doing? I don't have any time for that kind of stuff. I'm not going to listen to that kind of stuff. And that's the kind of thing that when I uh, heard the fonts uh, video, some of that stuff, at least, at least a third of it was that kind of stuff. I'm like, this is all super subjective and I'm not that kind of reader, okay? I read all different kinds of stuff. And just because I really do dig um, tough stuff and experimental fiction, I love experimental fiction. And um, literary fiction, I love literary works, uh, whatever. You just see, you see what I got and what, I'm, what, I'm, what I kind of get into. I'm not going to um, label myself, like hold on to the label of being like a pretentious reader because I'm not. I don't care what other people read. And I don't care if other people like what I read. You know what I mean? Courtney Federer, thank you very much for coming by. See, um, and, and, but that is not that academic side of it. That's not here. Okay. I'm not, um, here for that. And I don't listen to any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mark reads comic books. Everybody reads all different kinds of stuff. It's awesome. And, um, I don't take, and I'm not going to take any labels that are out there like that. And like apply them to myself because somebody else said that. And Barb in the in the video also does a bit of that, throwing those kind of labels out there that, uh, you know, you as if you can't read literary fiction or um, experimental fiction in that kind of way without a level of pretension. And you can, okay? I'm not. I'm not, I'm not going to grab onto that kind of label just because that's a, a kind of viewpoint that's held by, by, by a group of people. I don't give a crap. And just like most of the booktubers and maybe all of the booktubers that watch my channel, because somebody like Mark Richardson, um, Scott and Becky, um, Yasmin, and a lot of others. Uh, you read whatever you want and you read all kinds of stuff. And there's no difference as far as like your, whether you're being true to yourself by reading um, a mystery, a thriller, a romance, a literary work, a classic work, or whatever. It's all what you want to read. It's all what you have an impetus to read yourself. And you're just going to do that. Right. And that's just what we're here to do. Read. Right. And talk about what we love and talk about reading. So uh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm about. That's my take on that whole video there. And um, I had a lot of fun uh, thinking through that stuff. And I just wanted to say, that when it comes to uh, to books that are different, what about James Joyce Ulysses? Am I am I a pretentious 
reader because I read James Joyce? Hell no. Okay? I read James Joyce because um, James Joyce, especially Ulysses here, had a profound effect on literature and uh, literature ongoing. <clears throat> Same thing with Jane Austen. Okay? Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice was one of the most awesome books that I've ever read um, as far as a romance, as far as a genre piece. And the dialogue is off the charts, off the charts. And I've never read Finnegan's Wake. I've, I've, never, I've never jumped into that one. But that is the only James Joyce that I have left to read. And, and I will. I will read it at some point, that's for sure. <laughs> there is so many channels and I'll leave you guys. I'm going to, I'm going to end this because we've hit up, hit an hour and it's been so cool hanging with everybody. And, uh, I'll leave y'all with this awesome because I love the minimalist style of these diaries right here, how this was done. This is a uh, basic books a member of uh, the Perseus Books Group published this. The first edition, uh, first uh, volume, I mean, of Robert Musell's diaries. So uh, beautiful to me. I love minimalist uh, covers. So thank you, Scott. Scott Danielson, thank you. Mark Richardson, thank you. Scott and Becky, the Bookish Bryants, thank you. Uh, Recognition's Book Club, The Republic of Bad Taste, uh, Yasmin at To The Lit House, Summer, Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, and uh, Very Literary Carrie, thank you for coming by. I love uh, love seeing everybody. Courtney Federer, uh, everybody, you know, America's Jewish mother, right? <laughs> so very cool. You guys are very cool. Thank you very much for coming by. I'm sure I'm forgetting um, a lot of people. PG, I ain't finna to read that. Thank you for coming by, brother. It was awesome to see you and uh, awesome to see everybody. Thank you for always supporting the lives on Friday nights. We have a lot of fun, right? And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye, book team. <laughs>